Okay, everybody, today we're going to learn a way to integrate for questions that are a little bit more difficult than what we've done so far. Uh, it's called the substitution rule, but probably what most people think of it as is U substitution. Okay, funny name, you'll see why it's called that in a second. So basically, U substitution. It's also called the reverse chain rule. The reason for that is because when you take the derivative by using the chain rule, if you're going to go back the other way and integrate, U substitution will often help you out. It'll be the formula, uh, the method you'll use to, to solve it. So here's the steps for U substitution. Step one, you're going to find a piece of the function whose derivative is also in the function. It's often going to be the denominator or something raised to a power where you're going to look. So maybe I'll just stop there and take a look at the first question. So we're trying to take the antiderivative of x squared minus 5 all raised to the eighth power times 2x in terms of x. So there's kind of two parts to this, right? There's the bracketed part and then we have the 2x. And if you take a look at that bit in the brackets right here, what we're looking for is a piece of the function whose derivative is also in the function. And you see that's the case. If we were to take the derivative of this green bit, what would we get? Ignore the 8, just the green bit. You get 2x. And wait a minute, 2x is right here. So this is a prime candidate for u substitution when you can find something like that. And just like it says here, I found it in a p part of the function where you're raising it to a power. That won't always be the case, but when I see this bracketed part to a power, it's very likely that that's the, the part we want to define in step number one. Okay, step two. You're going to set that piece equal to u. You're going to say u equals to that piece. So in this question that we're doing right here, I might as well keep going with it, I'm going to put u equals x squared minus 5. Now we're going to take the derivative. So du dx, we're doing this in terms of x's, right? Look, we've got x. What does that equal? That equals 2x, if we're taking the derivative. This is just a constant, so it equals 0, so that's it. It just equals 2x. Step 3. Use u and du to replace parts of the original integral and integrate. Alright, so what are we saying here? First of all, I want to get this, so instead of having du over dx, it's just du equals. So we can easily isolate the du, right? It'll be du equals 2x, and we bring the dx up here, multiply. So we have, there we go. Now we can rewrite this right here. Look, instead of writing x squared minus 5, I'm going to write u. Those are exactly equal to each other. And instead of writing 2x dx, I'm going to write du because those are totally equal to each other. 2x dx, 2x dx. So what do we now have? The integral sign. We have this yellow bit, x squared minus 5, which is exactly the same as u. It's still raised to the 8th power, don't forget that. And then we have 2x dx, which is exactly the same as du. Whoa, look at that. We're left with an integral that's really, really easy to take. You know how to do this. You raise the 8 up to 9. You put the same number on the bottom and we always put plus c when we do indefinite integrals. Last step, you got to plug this u amount into the u here. So x squared minus 5 goes right where that u is. x squared minus 5, it's all raised to the ninth power, divided by 9 plus c. And we're done. Okay, let's do this one. So the first thing, we need to find part of the function that when we take the derivative, that shows up in the function as well. And again, a hint is often it's the thing that's raised to a power. So look at this bit in the bracket. What's the derivative of 2 plus sine x? Well, that's a constant, so it's nothing. Sine x, the derivative is cosine x. Oh, and look at that right there. There it is. This will work. So let's set u equal to the 2 plus sine x. So then du dx, when we take the derivative in terms of x, we just get cosine x, which is perfect. Uh, we want it actually written with just the du here, so du equals cosine x 
dx. So let's rewrite this here, but with our new statements. So the integral of 2 plus sine x, we said it's the same as u, so we're going to have u to the 10th. Cosine x dx, cosine x dx, it's just the same as du. Oh, this question is actually pretty similar to the one we did before. Very easy um, antiderivative to take here. So you're going to raise it up to 11, put the same number on the bottom, plus c, and then we just substitute in that u amount right here. So we have 2 plus sine x raised to the 11th power over 11 plus c. Okay, the other place you want to look often to uh, find your u amount is in the denominator. So if you look at the denominator here, we have this square root, but let's not worry about that so much. The 1 minus x cubed. What's the derivative of 1 minus x cubed? It's negative 3x squared. Well, we've got an x squared up there. Maybe this is possible. Let's try. Looks a little bit more difficult, but maybe we can do this. Let's make u just equal to the 1 minus x cubed. So then du dx is equal to a derivative of a constant is 0, and then we have this bit right here, so that it's going to be negative 3x squared. Okay, as always, we want to get just the du here. So we have negative 3x squared dx. Hmm, it's close, but it's not perfect, is it? I mean, if you look at the bottom, we have this 1 minus x cubed and 1 minus x cubed, that's fine. Up here we have x squared dx, right, x squared dx, and we do have that x squared dx here, but we also have this negative 3. Well, that's okay. Why don't we just get that negative 3 to the other side? So du over negative 3 equals x squared dx. Great. Now we can substitute the x squared dx here, x squared dx, with this, including the negative 3. See what I mean? So let's try this. So we're going to take the integral of, let's start with the bottom. On the bottom, we have the square root of 1 minus x cubed, but 1 minus x cubed is u. On the top, we want to replace x squared dx. What are we replacing x squared dx with? With du over negative 3. So that negative 3 is going to end up in the denominator like that. Now let's rewrite this before we actually take the integral. So one thing, this negative 3 is a constant. That can just move up front. But be careful, it's in the denominator, so it's still going to be in the denominator. So we have negative 1 over 3. Uh, let's write this u. I don't want to put it in the denominator, I want it in the numerator. So how do we do that? It'd be u to the negative 1 half, right? And we still have our du. Oh, now we're lo it's looking like something we can actually take the integral of. So we'll keep the one, negative 1 over 3. Uh, what do we do? We raise the denominator up 1, so it becomes u to the 1 half. And then we have to divide by that same amount, plus c. Okay, so negative 1 over 3. This is the square root of u, isn't it? And remember what happens here? You divide by the fraction. This denominator here actually flips up to the top, so you actually get a 2 up here plus c. I'm taking way more steps than you probably will. So now you can simplify here. You can multiply the negative one-third times the two. So you get negative two-thirds square root of u. But wait a minute. How much is u? If I go way back up here, u is one minus x cubed. So let's put that in there. One minus x cubed. And then I have plus c. Okay, that one's a little bit tougher for sure. Okay, if we take the derivative of the denominator, because it's often a good place to look, you get 8w plus 6. Oh, that's not what that equals. But wait a minute. Let's just try it. u equals 4w squared plus 6w minus 1. So then du dw, look, it's in terms of w this time, isn't it? Equals 8w plus 6 and then plus zero, I didn't need to put it. Ah, oh, it's too bad, it didn't work. We had 4w plus 3 here. But do you see what the good news is? Look at this, 8w plus 6. You can factor out a 2, and you're left with 4w plus 3. Yes, it worked. We're on track here. All right, so we do not want to have this 2 here, and we do not want to have the dw there. So why don't we go du divided by the 2 is equal to 4w plus 3, and then we'll bring the dw up here.
So I think we're in good shape now. Um, so let's rewrite the original question. On the bottom, in the denominator, what do we have? We just have u. The whole denominator is equal to this. It's just u. In the numerator, it's 4w plus 3dw. 4w plus 3dw. There it is, right there. So we're going to put du over 2. du over 2. But wait a minute, 2 is a constant. Let's just move it out front here. So it's actually 1 over 2. I'm hoping that makes sense. Okay, now we can take the antiderivative. So, you know what happens when you have just the u on the bottom, right? u to the negative 1. It means it's going to be equal to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u plus c. And then all we have to do is plug in to that u whatever we said u was equal to. And we said it was 4w squared plus 6w minus 1. plus c. Okay, there you go. Now, there's one other thing we have to talk about with these. What happens if you have definite integrals? Those were all indefinite integrals where you didn't have the upper and lower bound. But what if you do have the bounds? How does it work? Well, there's just one little difference you have to worry about. You've got to change the bounds of integration when you set up your u statement and your du statement. So you're going to plug each bound into the x slot of your u equation. All right, sounds confusing, but it's not bad. Okay, this first one's tricky, actually. Um, the place to actually look is not the denominator. It's here. If you take the derivative of root x, or x to the 1 half, you get 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Oh, negative 1 half means you know, square root in the denominator, and you do have a square root in the denominator. So this right here is what you're going to call the u. u is root x, or x to the 1 half. So if that's the case, what's du dx? What's the derivative of that? Well, the 1 half comes down, x, and that becomes down to the negative 1 half. Or you could write that as what? 1 over 2, and then x to the negative 1 half is the same as the square root of x in the denominator. Um, all right, we could move our, our x over. So du equals dx over 2 root x. Oh, sorry, and also you don't want to have that 2 there, right? That's not, I don't see any 2 in here. We want to get rid of that 2. So we need to get that to the other side, so we should multiply by 2. Can I cheat here and just erase this and move it to the other side? So you're going to get 2 du equals dx over root x. Okay, why is this helpful? Because now if I rewrite this, now first of all, don't put down the bounds. I'm going to do that in a second. If I rewrite this, I have e to the u, right? u is root x, so I have e to the u. And then, look at, I have in the denominator, root x, yeah, and I have a dx. It's kind of like I have dx over root x, dx over, oh, this is it. So all I have to write down now is 2 du. But wait a minute, that 2 is a constant. Let's move it up front. So 2 du. Oh, wow, this is a very easy uh, function to integrate. But first, before we do that, we need to figure out our new bounds. Upper bound, lower bound. The way you get the new upper bounds and lower bounds is you plug them into the x of our u expression. You plug them in right, well, I'll put it here. You plug it in right there. So for the upper bound, which was 9, I'm going to plug that in here, and I get root 9, which is equal to 3. So that's my new upper bound, is 3. For the lower bound, I plug it into here again, so I'm going to take the square root of 1, which is 1, and that's my new lower bound, is 1. Okay, and then we just proceed as normal and integrate this. Well, that's pretty easy. We have the 2, then the when we integrate e to the u, we get e to the u. Nice. And our bounds are 3 and 1. So, we've got 2. Let's start with the upper bound. We had e to the 3 minus e to the 1. This is a u, right? That's not 4. That's a u. We're plugging into there. So minus e to the 1. And I'm cheating again. You don't need to put the 1 if you don't want to. It's fine if you do, but you don't need to. This is it. This is our answer right there.
Okay, one with uh, trigonometric functions. So you're going to have to remember here what the derivative is of secant x and tan x. And hopefully you remember that for tan x, if I make u tan x, it works out very nicely because the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. Oh, perfect. It's just what we wanted. So let's move that dx statement there. So we have du equals sec secant squared x dx. And now we're in good shape. So don't put down the bounds. We'll come back to those. We have tan x, which is u. We also have secant squared x dx. Secant squared x dx. Oh, it's just du. And now we need our new bounds. So rather than putting upper bound, lower bound, I'm just going to put ub and lb. And remember how we get them? We plug this amount, pi over 4, right here in the x right there. So we have tan of pi over 4. Now, pi over 4 is 45 degrees. Hey, 45 degrees, sine and cosine are equal to each other. Tan is 1. Beautiful. And then for the lower bound, again, we plug in here 0. Tan of 0. Okay? Remember, tan is sine over cos. So what's sine at 0 degrees? Sine is 0. Well, 0 divided by anything is still 0. Look at this beautiful definite integral I have to solve. We can do this in seconds. Uh, we raise the exponent, which was 1, we raise it up to 2, and divide by 2, and we're going to do this from 0 to 1. So if you plug 1 in there, you get 1 squared, which is 1 over 2, and if you put 0 in there, you get 0 squared, which is 0 over 2. 1 half minus 0 halves is still 1 half, and that's our answer. Okay, last one. Remember, when we're doing all these uh, definite integrals, you're finding the area under the curve. So in this question, it says, find the area under the curve, y equals 1 over 2x plus 1 from 0 to 1. So this is going to be a definite integral, right? In order to get the area, what we need to find is, from 0 to 1, what's the integral of two, 1 over 2x plus 1? And you could use u substitution for this. If you make the denominator u, what is the derivative of that? It's just 2. But we want the x on the other side, and we don't want the 2 here. So we would have du over 2 equals what's left here. Well, you could put 1 if you want, or, and the dx. I'm actually going to do that because, look, we have a 1 right here. Oh, whoops, did you notice what I forgot to do? I forgot to put dx here. Sorry about that. Okay, so this works out well. On the denominator, we have 2x plus 1, and we have 2x plus 1 here. And in the numerator, we have 1dx, 1dx. So we're good to go. The area is equal to, don't put in those bounds. We've got to change them because this is a definite integral. So we have... Uh, 2x plus 1 is in the bottom, so we have 1 over u. And then we have our 1dx, which we're changing to du over 2, but 2 is a constant. Why don't we put it up front? So we'd have 1 over 2, like that. Now we need our bounds. So upper bound, lower bound. We're plugging into this spot right here, right into the x of our u statement. So if we plug 1 into there. You get 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. I guess I could actually show you that. Equals 3. And if we plug 0 in there, you get 2 times 0 plus 1 equals 1. So we can now add those bounds to our expression here. a equals 1 half. Come on, pen. Bracket. Uh, okay, well, what's the um, antiderivative of 1 over u? It's the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u. And we're doing this from 1 to 3. So put the 1 half down. Let's start with 3. You would have natural logarithm of 3. You don't need to put the absolute value because 3 is positive. So there's no point in putting the absolute value around it. That's redundant. So natural logarithm of 3 minus natural logarithm of, again, don't need to put absolute value, of 1. Do you see you can simplify one of those? The second one here. What's that equal to? Remember, the base in natural logarithm is e. e to the what equals 1? e to the 0 equals 1. Oh, this whole highlighted part is just equal to 0. You don't even need to write it. It's 0. So your answer for area is 1 half times the natural logarithm of 3.
and there you go okay that is u substitution super important next time we'll learn uh, a second advanced method of integration looking forward to it people bye